So we'll look at the first, let's look at the first uh, verse, well, uh, scripture verse that Bishop Hay uses. He quotes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, and it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in the clothing of sheep, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Now, Bishop Hay says that here our Lord Jesus Christ commands his followers to beware of false prophets, that is to flee from them and be on guard against them. And he adds this powerful motive, lest ye be seduced and ruined by them. You know, if we look at the passage, it says, beware of false prophets that come in the clothing of sheep. I mean, that's what all these particular, that's what they do, right? They, they come looking like one of us. And it, more specifically, they come in looking in the garments uh, of what our priests and bishops wear, right? They're going to come looking like a Catholic. They're going to come looking like a Catholic priest. But inwardly, they're, they're wolves. And how are we described by our Lord? We're described as sheep, okay? We're sheep. So if a sheep, a sheep is defenseless, you know, they, they're, they're weak, they're defenseless. But if they are hanging out with a wolf, they will eventually be devoured and killed by them. They have no defense against it. We're described as that. Even though we may think that we uh, have some sort of strong guard, we're sheep. And if we're next to a wolf, we're going to be destroyed. Because that's what wolves do. That's what false teachers are. So that's not why we have to be aware of false teachers. <laughs> because they can and will devour you. An exa another example would be all the all the Protestants. I find like they're actually the most dangerous. Well, I don't want to say the most dangerous regarding false teachers. But in this ecumenical age we have with in in the Novus Ordo is they speak about Protestants in such a way as if they're no different than us because they supposedly love Jesus and, you know, they believe the Bible and they say they love Jesus. So, and we use the terms like separated brethren, you know, this, a, a night, you know, nicety type term. And it can lead to a lot of confusion to where they think, oh, hey, you know, they're no different than us. But... So they're come so so then these people these 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 Protestant ministers will come and speak to Catholics, looking and acting like, uh, like a sheep, like they're one of the people, but inwardly they're what they're trying to do is what they're trying to bring you out of the faith, and lead you to their own Protestant sect. I've seen where where a lot of times. Catholics will be around Protestants for so long that they end up sounding like Protestants. They have no longer have the faith. They don't realize they lost the faith. They've just been devoured so much that they're dead. But they don't know it. They talk and sound just like a Protestant does. But yet they cling, they still say, they, you know, hey, well, I'm glad to be a Catholic, I love my Catholic faith. But they speak and act and believe exactly what a Protestant believes. And they don't even realize it. It's like, it's like the, like the whole example of a, where the frog gets boiled in the water slowly. They don't even realize they're being boiled by the time it happens. That's what these, that's what these uh, false teachers do. So our Lord says, uh, Beware of false prophets, at least they seduce you, right? 